It was Christmas time once again. For most people, it was a time of giving and a time of celebration. But for one man, Ebenezer Scrooge, Christmas was nothing of the sort. For Scrooge, this Christmas was also the seventh anniversary of the death of his partner, Jacob Marley. Scrooge and Marley were partners for many years. Even so, Scrooge was not terribly upset by Marley's passing, working on the very day of Marley's funeral. Scrooge was a mean man who was feared by many, and no one in all of London feared Scrooge more than his unfortunate employee, Bob Cratchit. Cratchit! Y yes, Mr. Scrooge? What o'clock is it? It's... it's... three o'clock, Mr. Scrooge, sir. And the workday is far from over, so might I inquire as to why you are not working? Well, I... well, you see, I... I'm very sorry, sir. <laughs> a Merry Christmas, Uncle! And to you too, Bob Cratchit. Thank you, sir, thank you. And a Merry Christmas to you. Ah! Humbug! Christmas a humbug, Uncle? Surely you don't mean that. I most certainly do. Merry Christmas. <laughs> What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Well, if that's so, then what right have you to be unhappy? <laughs> You're rich enough. <laughs> bah, I say. Bah, humbug! Oh, come now, Uncle. Don't be cross with me. And what else should I be when you come in here acting like a fool, shouting Merry Christmas? <laughs> Merry Christmas. What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older, not an hour richer? If I had my way, every idiot who goes around with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own Christmas pudding. Is that any way to keep the spirit of Christmas? Keep the Christmas spirit in your way, nephew, and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Ha! As if Christmas has ever done you any good. <sighs> Maybe I haven't profited in the way you mean. But there are many good ways in which I've benefited from Christmas. Christmas is a, a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And it's a time when people open their hearts to their fellow men. So, Uncle, though it's never put a piece of gold in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good, and I say God bless it! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh my, now I've done it. I I'm sorry. My goodness, I'm clumsy today. There's what your Christmas has done for me. Let me hear another sound from you and you'll keep Christmas by losing your job. Don't be angry, Uncle. In fact, to cheer you up, why don't you come to Christmas dinner at our home? The only way you will get me to set foot in your home is to wait until I am dead and then drag me there. But why, Uncle Scrooge? Be on your way, nephew. I've never asked anything from you except that we be friends. I think you are leaving. Very well, Uncle. Though it saddens me to see you so angry with me, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas all the same. Out! And a Happy New Year! Bah! Humbug! Now what? Can I have no peace? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? My former partner, Mr. Marley, has been dead seven years this very night. 
Ah, then, Mr. Scrooge, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. And I'd be pleased if you would state your business so I can return to mine. I represent a group of businessmen who take up a collection for the poor at Christmas time. As you know, there are thousands of needy people in want of common comforts. Are there no prisons? There are many prisons. And the workshops are in operation? They are, though I wish they were not. The workers there do not earn enough to buy meat or warmth or decent shelter, so we are donating money to provide some of these things to the less fortunate. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. I do not celebrate Christmas and I do not give away money so others can make merry. I do help support the prisons and workhouses, however, and those who are bad off should go there. Many would rather die. If they're going to die, so be it. At least it will decrease the surplus population. There are too many poor people on the streets as it is. But the poor are... The poor are none of my business. This is my business, and I need to attend to it. So good afternoon, sir. <sighs> Right on time when it comes to leaving, eh, Cratchit? Well, sir, unless you've something else for me to do. You'll want the whole day off tomorrow, I suppose? If it's convenient, sir, it is Christmas. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I deducted your day's pay, you wouldn't think me fair, would you? And yet you think nothing of me having to pay you a full day's wages for no work. It is only once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. <sighs> but I suppose you must have the whole day off. Be here all the earlier the next morning. Oh, yes, sir. I, I shall, sir. And thank you, sir. Nonsense! Can't be 
Jacob! Jacob, is that you? Ah! <laughs> what do you want with me, Jacob? March. No! I can't believe it! I won't believe it! Believe it and trust me. It must be something I hate. Do you believe in me or not? I do! I do, I do, I do! But why do you wear chains, Jacob? You were a good man in business. Business? I was good in the business of taking advantage of people. And now I am paying the price. Hear me, for soon I must leave. I am here to warn you that you still have a chance to escape my fate, Ebenezer. Oh, thank you, Jacob. Thank you, thank you. You always were a good friend. You will be haunted by three spirits tonight. Maybe I was hasty in calling him a good friend. Without their visit, you will suffer what I suffer. Expect the first spirit to call when the clock tolls one. The next will come with the stroke of two o'clock. And the third at three. Uh, can't we do this in the morning, Jacob? I'd like to get a good night's sleep. Look to see me no more, Ebenezer. But for your own sake, remember what I have said. clock and no spirits it was nothing but a dream nothing but a silly <laughs> Sir, are you the spirit whom Jacob Marley told me would come I am who and what are you 
I am the ghost of Christmas past. Please, spirit, tell me what your business is here. I come to help you, Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, that's very nice, but all I need is a good night's sleep, so you can run along and I'll just... Oh, put me down! No, forget I said that! Don't put me down! I mean, I mean, I mean... You will come with me. Out there? But I'm only mortal. I'll, I'll fall. You will not fall, Ebenezer Scrooge. Recognize this place? I was raised here. Oh, set us down. Oh, please set us down. That's Colin Ames. Edward Macaulay. James Harrington. Jamie. Don't you recognize me? It's Ebenezer Scrooge! They cannot hear you. They are but shadows of things that have been. It still brightens my heart to see my playmates once more. Merry Christmas, boys! Merry Christmas, one and all! Merry Christmas, indeed. What good has it ever done for you? Oh, but Christmas was a fine time at the school. Everyone happy and laughing and... It is not all happy and laughing. Come to the school where you lived, and you will see there is one child left behind, deserted by his father. No. No, I, I don't want to go in. You will come. You need not take me in, spirit. I know who I shall see. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been easier for us to have used the door? See yourself as you were as a boy, Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> You've done your worst, spirit. If it was your goal to remind me of a miserable childhood, then you have succeeded. Yet the misery passed, finally. <laughs> I'm a young man. And having a very different Christmas this year. Ebenezer! Fan! Fan! It's really you! My dearest sister! Remember, it is only a shadow of the sister you once had. But she's as real as you and me! Fan! Fan! Oh, Fan! You've come to visit me for Christmas! <laughs> Not to visit, dear brother, to bring you home. Home? But how can that be? Oh, Father's so much kinder now. Home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one night that I asked him if you could come home, and he said yes. I've brought a coach, and you're coming home forever, never to come back here. Oh, it's going to be the merriest Christmas ever. Oh, my dear, dear fan. <laughs> 
You did love her greatly, didn't you? She was the best sister any boy could have had. A delicate creature, though. She died as a young woman, I believe. Giving birth to her child. Your nephew, Fred. Yes. We must move on. No, no, I won't go. I want to stay here with Fan. <laughs> Do you recognize this warehouse? How could I not? It's Fezziwig's warehouse. I had my first job here. We've picked a good time to pay a visit. What is it about doors that ghosts do not like? We are concerned with your problems, Ebenezer Scrooge, not mine. Did you ever see a more wonderful sight? True, but something must be wrong here. What could possibly be wrong? The time of day. It's broad daylight, long before closing, yet there's a party going on. Of course there's a party. Old Fezziwig always closed the warehouse early on Christmas Eve so he could have a party for his employees. And there I am. Look at me. <laughs> Quite a dashing young man, wasn't I? Indeed. And the young man with you? My friend Richard. Best friends we were, both of us working for Fezziwig and the old man letting us sleep in the warehouse on beds he set up for us. There's not a better man in all London than him. Funny how easily impressed young men are. All it took was a little money spent on a party, and they thought so highly of Fezziwig. But it wasn't the money Fezziwig spent that made us think highly of him. It was the way he treated us, making us all feel important, even the least important of us, and... Something on your mind? Nothing. No, I... I, w I was just thinking. Yes. I was just thinking of my clerk, Bob Cratchit, and how I'd like to say a word or two to him right now. My time grows short. I... I believe you once loved me, Ebenezer, but there is a new love in your life now. A love for money and profit. It's all you care for, and there's no room left for me. Just because I am a successful man of business doesn't mean I don't care for you. You see? You cannot even use the word love when speaking of me. But I... <laughs> I wish you happiness in the life you've chosen. I can bear this no longer. I have told you these things are shadows of things that have been. They are what they are. Do not blame me. Take me back. Hold me no more. What? Where's the ghost of Christmas past? How did I get back here? It's two o'clock. The second spirit comes. It's in there! I know it is! I won't look! I won't! I won't! I won't! Please! Please, oh spirit! I'm an old man! Have mercy on me! Jacob! I sure hope you knew what you were talking about when you said this was for my own good. I'm sorry, Jacob, I'm sorry! The man never did like it when someone doubted him.
Come in! Come in! I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. I'll bet you've never seen the likes of me before. <laughs> uh, that's a wager you'd win. <laughs> Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. A poor neighborhood, isn't it? Oh, but it's the richest of neighborhoods, for these people keep Christmas in their hearts. Here is the home of your employee, Bob Cratchit. Oh, what can be keeping your father and Tiny Tim? And where can Martha be? Did I hear someone call my name? There you are, Martha. Christmas. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Mother, but we had so much work to finish at the store. Oh, never mind, dear. You're here now. Now sit by the fire and warm yourself. No, no! You've got to hide, Martha. Father's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Martha. She's not coming. Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? Here I am, Papa. Here I am. I should have known better. And how did Tiny Tim behave in church? Wonderfully. He's growing stronger each day. The boy does not look well to me. Bob Cratchit only speaks words he wishes were true. And now, Master Peter Cratchit, take your brothers and fetch the Christmas goose from the bakery. I, Father? I get to go for the goose? Indeed you do, my boy. <laughs> Never was there such a goose. And now for a Christmas toast. <laughs> a Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. And God bless us. God bless us. Will Tiny Tim live, Spirit? I see a vacant seat by the chimney corner and a crutch without an owner. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no, oh no, kind spirit, say he will be spared. Why does it bother you? If he's going to die, so be it. At least it will decrease the surplus population. There are too many poor people on the streets as it is, or so I've heard. A toast to Mr. Scrooge, without whom this feast could not have taken place. Oh, to Mr. Scrooge, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a good piece of my mind. My dear, it's Christmas Day. I'll drink to his health for your sake, and because it's Christmas, but not for his. Long life and a merry Christmas to him. He'll be very merry, I've no doubt. To, to Mr. Scrooge. Enough. Enough, indeed.
No! Wait! Let me out of here! When this is over, I'm going to buy myself some new sheets and bed curtains. Are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come? I know, stupid question. And you will show me the shadows of things that have not yet happened, but will happen as time goes on? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any spirit I've seen this night. But as I know you are here to do me good, and that I am not the man I once was, I ask you to lead on. I don't know much about it, except that he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. What did he do with his money? I have no idea, except that he didn't leave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I expect it'll be a cheap funeral, but I can't imagine who'd go. Well, I'll go to it, but only if there's a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know these men. I've done business with them all. Who is it that's died, and why, why are they acting so coldly? this time, Mrs. Dilbert. Oh, but it's a good bundle. It's not that I do this sort of thing often, but a woman's got to take care of herself, doesn't she? A wicked old man he was, and them's the truest words ever spoken. And what have we here? Bed curtains? You don't mean to say you took them down, rings and all? I most certainly do, and why not? My dear, you were born to make a fortune. <laughs> Spirit, I understand. You've shown me how some poor man has been treated after his death, and that I might end up being like him unless I change my ways. Spirit, take me from this dreadful place. If you do, I swear I will learn the lessons this room holds. Surely someone in this city must mourn for this man. Someone must have had their lives touched by his passing. Mother, do your eyes hurt? Oh, it's nothing, dear. I'll fetch another candle. No, no, Peter. They're much better now. Besides, we must save our candles. It's past time for your father to be home. Yes, Mother, but I think he walks a little slower lately. I've known him to walk very quickly with... with Tiny Tim upon his shoulders. And so have I. I too, Mother. But then, Tim was very light to carry, and your father loved him so. There was no trouble. No trouble at all. <laughs> Here comes your father now.
Don't breathe, Father. Please. Oh, but I'm not. I know Tiny Tim's happy now. <laughs> oh, my child. Oh, my little, little boy. Why, of all places, have you brought me here? What can the death of the man we saw have to do with the death of poor Tiny Tim? I know it is the man who died, but I cannot look at the name on the stone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll look, but first answer one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or the shadows of things that may be? Tell me I can change what is to be if I change my own ways. I am the man who died? Who those people cared so little about? No, spirit. No, no, I am not the man I once was. I will not be the man I was. Tell me I can change the things you've shown me. I will honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all year. I will live in the past, present, and future. The spirits of all three will live in me. I'll remember the lessons you've taught. Only tell me I can erase the name on this tombstone. Tell me I can save Tiny Tim. <laughs> they can. Listen, my fine boy, do you know the poultry shop on the next block? Of course I do. Oh, an intelligent boy, a remarkable boy. Do you know if they've sold that prize turkey they had hanging in the window? You know, the big one? What? The one as big as me? Oh, what a delightful boy. Yes, yes, that's the one. It's hanging there now. It is? Well, go and buy it. Ha, ha, some joke. No, no, wait, wait, dear boy, I mean it. Tell them to bring it here so I can give them directions where to take it. Come back with a man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with them in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir! <laughs> I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's. He shan't have the slightest idea who sent him a turkey twice the size of Tiny Tim. <laughs> has anyone ever seen such a turkey as this? But, but who could have sent it to us? Who could afford such a bird? Only one man I know could afford this turkey. You... you don't mean... Well, you can't mean Mr. Scrooge. 
Christmas to you. And as for what you can put me down for to help the poor. But Mr. Scrooge, to donate such a sum as that. I know, I know. But I have a good many years to make up for. And you'll be sure to come see me next Christmas. You'll be sure to come see me next month. I shall, Mr. Scrooge. And a Merry Christmas to you. Fred, here to accept your invitation to dinner, if you'll still have me. Have you? Well, you can't know how much this means to me. Uh, come in, come in. See here, dear friends. I want to introduce you to my Uncle Scrooge. He's come to join us for dinner. Can you forgive an old man for never coming to visit your home? I don't understand what's come over him. I'm so glad he's here that I don't particularly care what's come over him. But it is a mystery. It's no mystery, Fred. Christmas has come into his heart. <laughs> A quarter past nine. Oh, but it's just too perfect. Cratchit! What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I am late. Yes, you are. Come into my office. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. I am not going to stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, I'm going to raise your salary. Sir? You heard me, Bob. <laughs> I'm raising your salary. And a Merry Christmas to you. And I'm going to help your family. We'll discuss your affairs this very afternoon over lunch. Lunch? Sir, you're going to take me to lunch? I am indeed. And when we get back, we're going to stoke a fire in your office to drive off the cold that's been there all these years. But I... 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 Yes, yes, I know, I know. Voices ringing, children singing, Christmas time is near. Bells and holly, let's be jolly, spread some Christmas cheer. Spirits bright, a wondrous sight, there's magic in the air, it's a fairy, oh so Merry Christmas everywhere. Fire's glowing, now it's snowing, stars light up the night, many places smiling faces filled with such delight, Santa's
Scrooge was better than his word, and he came to be known throughout London for his good deeds. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the old city knew. And it was said that no one knew how to keep Christmas in his heart all year long better than Ebenezer Scrooge. Cheers.